So, my second week is over. The first whole Monday to Friday week. And it was a lot of uh, a lot of knowledge to cram into one week. It's pretty different from Sweden when I went in every every Saturday for three hours. Now I go every day for three hours. Uh, so yeah, a lot of Japanese. Um, we went through grammar-wise was basically now that I that I remember right now, yoni. Yonishteimas and passive form, and also oh yeah, ba. That, that was last week. Um, so yoni is basically like so that. Um, so it's like to be good at Japanese yoni, like be good at Japanese yoni. To be good at Japanese, you do something, something, something. So like Nihongo o umaku naru yoni. Uh, mainichi benkyo steimas, uh, for instance, and then yoni steimas is a different thing. It's kind of like uh, I will try to do something, or I will try to do something from now on. It's diff. I asked, and it was different from just temiru, which is just to try, which is basically like, uh, oh, this um, vodka. I'm, I'm gonna try this, like glug glug, but it's not like I'm going to. It's like um, I'm going to try getting up at eight o'clock in the morning every night. That's a different kind of try. So that's more like yonishite mas. And then passive form is just you know like when something happens to you. It's what I call it. But uh, oh yeah, and by someone else like watashi wa dorobo ni saifu saifu o nusumaremashita. So nusumu nusuma nusumareru. Nusumaremashita. Watashi wa dorobo ni. And ni is not to in this case. Uh, it's basically like uh, niyotte. Uh, by. Uh, my, uh, which is what it, the whole sentence is. Like my wallet was stolen by a thief. But it doesn't, we don't need niyotte. It's just ni is enough. So, and the um, conjugation is with, well, we have in this we have basically like the course in Sweden. It's the three groups. The third is just surukuru. The first is all the like the the ones that ends with ku or uh, ru or mu or um, uh, whatever else. And then um, uh, the group two is just the ru verbs that like are really simple, like taberu tabemas. But when I uh, in my mind I still split it split the first group into two more like ones that just end with something that, with u and the ones that just end with u like au and kau etc so for the u only verbs it's yeah it's ware wareru so kau ka kawareru you iwareru uh au awareru etc and then they said this, and I realized that a long time ago. But whenever, whenever you take some kind of form to something, it always becomes group two. So it's never any, not like you have this uh, first verb like iku, and then ikeru, and then it's like ikerimas or something. It's always ike, iker, ikemas at that point. So that's really convenient. Uh, for the something u verbs that I call them, it's uh, iku i. Ikareru, it, it conjugates to an a, and then reru. So ikareru, uh, aso, asobareru, um, kanjirareru. That's also the thing, because the regular group two verbs like taberu, that, then you have rareru. But the ones that are from the first group that just happen to end with ru, since the ru becomes ra, and then reru, it's basically the same as rareru. Uh, so, yeah, that's something to keep an eye out for. Uh, if even if it's raderu, doesn't mean that it comes from group two. Uh, yeah, um, we had on Friday. We had two things that were new. Uh, we we also had like listening comprehension, comprehension, which is reminiscent of what I did at the JLPT. But uh, we did it like basically in two. There was one thing we listened to, and then it was like. 
answer two questions based on the text and then the other one was like fill in the blanks of the script sort of but that part was easier i felt uh we had uh, conversation uh, practice uh, which is much needed because that's my weakest part uh, on friday there was two new things as i said it was uh, sakubun to write i was hoping there would be like free writing because i wanted to l write like a a murder mystery <laughs> sort of or something because there was this one of the days uh, the teacher asked like have any one of you since you came to Japan been victim of something and then one guy said well, I, my umbrella was stolen and then like where at the school because you know in Japan uh, you put when you're outside and it's raining you put the umbrella in a rack thing before the you go into a store or somewhere and then when you come out, your umbrella may or may, may not be gone. But if it's gone, you just take someone else's and just move on. Because it's, like, it's not like even like you own an umbrella, sort of. It's like it's everyone's chair, shared property. But he had his umbrella stolen twice. So I wanted to write like that someone got murdered at the school and it was basically him who ca caught someone stealing his umbrella and then he killed him. That would would have been fun. Maybe I'll do that still, but just do it on on the side for practice because after we, we this time we were, were um we were told to write a postcard and like okay this is the kind of opening line you use this is the what you do next and this is how you finish it so it's kind of a little too rigid for my taste unfortunately but and that made me also realize that probably all of the other ones are also going to be there they're going to come up with a theme and you i'm going to have to work within the theme so if I want to do branch out and do anything uh, creative, it <laughs> sounds bad to say, but I'm gonna have to do it on my spare time, which is fine anyway, because I, you know, practice is practice and everything. Second part was the achievement test, which uh, was just uh, it was like three, basically five pages in total, because like two of them were A3 size, and then one that was just single of questions, and it basically covered the whole weeks what we did and i th felt it was went fairly well but there's you know there's also always something i'm about to do wrong like i've been it was really annoying this week how i kept doing these small mistakes like i forget to put the the two little things on uh ha to make a ba like kaere ba and then like kaere ha like wrong it's so annoying because I know when I wrote it, then I I know what that I'm writing kaede uh, So why I just skip that? It's really annoying. But I think this might I took my time with it too. I mean, most of the others in the class were done before me, especially the Chinese people. They're done really fast for some reason. But I think I'm going to get a good result. Hopefully, I get result tomorrow. But I'm not sure yet. Um, but there's one thing kind of special there was one it was just bef i got it on friday morning but it, not morning the first on the friday but it was one of those daily uh, homeworks on thursday and it was the last part i got no points for those two it was 13 points off the whole thing it was basically to write this little conversation between two people and it was like picture of some guy with a question mark over his head and picture of a girl with a, like a speech bubble and then it was like someone proposing to someone and I, I just assumed that it was basically the first guy asking the other one out or something and then the second one was like the marriage something something so I basically created a conversation uh, that was pretty a little maybe a little unorthodox like like hey baby you want to go out with me and they're like yeah you're handsome so let's go out together and then like how about marriage well okay then that kind of thing but they actually wanted something really specific so what I it was really a little annoying because what I wrote wasn't wrong and it was a plausible conversation which I thought was the point but no the point was write exactly as we uh, think uh, you're supposed to write it so it's like this exact type of sentence thing so that was a little annoying like that tickles my anti-authority nerve like why can't I just write it the way I want to write it? Why do you, in this, I mean, if you just fill in the right conjugation or something, of course it has to be what it has to be. But if it's like, um, it looks kind of open, then why is it not open? Why do I have to write something exactly the way you want it? So that was a little unfortunate. Hopefully I can avoid that in the future. Other things that happened this week was I finally got a phone. Uh, well, I have a phone already, but I finally got a SIM card. I ordered one like one week ago and it uh, arrived 
yesterday or the day before yesterday, I forget, but probably, no, it was probably on Friday. And f fuck, it's uh, such a load off my mind now having uh, in access to internet anywhere, not just at home, school, and 7-Elevens. And 7-Elevens aren't super uh, dependable anyway, because a lot of times you go there and then they demand some kind of re-login thing that I forgot how, to, how I did last time, and it's all in Japanese, and I was like, ah, oh, fuck it. Now I have internet anywhere, and I can actually call someone too. Uh, I used my calling potential to call to order pizza, because of course. <laughs> uh, that's pretty much it, I guess. Now that I have a phone, I'm going to try and get a bank account. Uh, I've tried to get Netflix, but I can't, so for some fucking reason. My new credit card or bank card has uh, been confirmed, and... I have PayPal since before that, but I just, it says, oh, something wrong with your payment method all the time. I just can't get Netflix for some fucking reason. I want to get Netflix because I, normally I don't like Netflix, but in Japan I think it would be good. Uh, because um, fuck uh, going out looking for specific movies like on DVD, I want to just, you know, find one. So now my plan is going to be like buying a Netflix gift card code thing from like Amazon because I think that'll work and then like basically enter codes every month or something. But yeah, that's a bit annoying. Um and then there are, so yeah, that was this week. And it's been raining most of the week. Uh couple, yesterday I took a long ass walk down to Toji, which is the big pagoda thing that's Reminds me of uh, Yuffie's uh, side quest in Final Fantasy VII, where you had to fight one at each level, uh, one boss, and finally uh, you, you fought Yuffie's father at the end. I forgot his name, but anyway. Um, yeah, I bought magnets for my fridge. But speaking of buying, uh, the other part of this video is going to be another game pickups video. Yay! <laughs> Because I, I I have I've been to like four book offs uh, the last uh, week, but I didn't buy anything at any of them. I just kind of took notes of what they had that was special and for later. But now we're just like, fuck it, I want to buy something. So I bought a, a few things, and here they are. Right, games. I'm gonna go through this pretty quickly just to have it not take up so much time this time. First, a Game Boy game, Game Boy Gallery 1, which is a bad name because it's actually Game Boy Watch Gallery. The over it's, the, it's a Game Boy Watch game, so having it called Game Boy Gallery is kind of stupid. Anyway, it's really cheap, and why not? Hmm. Two Mega Drive games, actually, and I, don't, I didn't even bring my Mega Drive, but really cheap, so I'm just going to, you know... Uh, Put them away basically and save them for later. First is Magical Taru Rutokun, which is a, a cute ish platformer. And the thing about that one is, um, I didn't like the two Taru Rutokun games on Famicom actually, because they had one hit kills and were just kind of annoying in design. But this one is made by Game Freak and it has a life bar, so I, I think it's going to be decent. Next one Castle of Illusion, sorry, Mickey Mouse. At home I have World Evolution, so this uh, completes the the double pack. This one actually, I think, is probably going to be the be better game. Just, if not, if for nothing else, then it's like a Halloween-type game with a mysterious castle and everything. The World of Evolution just takes place outside, which is sort of dull. Uh, but on the other hand, you have multiplayer with Donald Duck, I think. Two Super Famicom games. First, Battle Pinball. Which is a pinball game with uh, SD characters, Gundam, uh, probably Common Rider and Ultraman somewhere. Looks like Maz Mazinger Z or something there. But yeah, uh, a pinball game with uh, SD Gundam and that kind of stuff. It looks pretty f uh, nice by screenshot standards anyway, so I'm going to see if it's fun. It was so cheap anyway, so I'll just give it a try. Second, another Goemon game, but it's actually not called Goemon 4, it's called uh, Goemon. Gambari Goemon Kira Kira Dochu Boku ga Dansa ni Nata Ryu or Nata Wake. Uh, wake and Ryu are written the same way and can be said in two ways. But yeah, the reason I want to become a dancer, I'm not sure why uh, Goemon has to do with dancing at all, but 
it's a Goemon game, and Goemon games are good. So, and it was cheap. So, you know, I, I did also see the Ebisumaru game there, but that's some kind of weird uh, board game thing that I'm not at all interested in. Moving up to the PlayStation, I, against my expectation, bought Biohazard Director's Cut. It was so... Um, I wasn't going to buy it, but it was only 500 yen, and on the back I see a screenshot from Resident Evil 1.5 which really piqued my interest, so like, why the hell is that there? Um, it has like a bonus disc with, I think, video clips, like the opening and ending uh, clips from the game or something, so... But somewhere is like something from Resident Evil 1.5? Like, I had to to see what it is, so... Yeah, I'm going to get to the bottom of that. Second, for only... Uh, now, PlayStation 2, for only 108 yen which is nothing, Tekken 4, because uh, that's the one I am actually, I have Tekken Tag in 5, so of course I want 4 all as well. Uh, I'm not sure if it works yet, I haven't tried it, but Tekken. And the last one isn't a game, but the, it's related to a game that's on PlayStation 3, and it's Yakuza 3 guidebook, a really thick-ass guidebook. Um... I recently bought this game so that I could play those uh, 10 uh, sub-stories, and here I can actually read about them, well, try to read about them too. I like how they're so thick, it's really like the Yakuza 3 Bible or something, but you, you know if, if these were made by, in America, they would ma be made by Brady games, they would be half as thick, but twice as, you know, big in, in uh, the other sense. So, I've been seeing these on a lot of stores in uh, like manga stores and because manga stores have like a game actually just electronic stores too they have this uh, like a game strategy guides section I've been seeing these I've been a little hesitant getting them because they're so like big they're going to cost a lot of a lot of money because of the weight to ship back to to Sweden later but and then just storing them and everything but I felt 3 was a good place to start so yeah, it was a three. And that was it. That was my purchases. Now, I did find another game at the store that I went to uh, that I really wanted to buy, but I I want to wait until Wednesday when I get my paycheck, so to speak. But I hope it doesn't disappear to them because it's somewhat rare and a good price, too. So, yeah. I'm not going to tell you what game or which store because then you might go and buy it. A pox on you. Anyway, that was this week. Whichever week that was. I don't do week numbers. See you next week.